Evangelists, they're just for outside the church, right? Do evangelists do the work for us of bringing people in the church? Why should that matter to me? These issues and more will be explored in this edition of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're on episode 14, God's Bodybuilders, Have I Got Good News For You. Word Search is a place to search God's word and a time for God's word to search us. We encourage godly character development as we stimulate seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness, looking for that to both inform and transform our prayer and practice for here at Word Search, we truly want to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of his word for his glory. On Word Search today then, we'll explore where we've been so far in our series about God's fit body plan and then we'll have the reading of our core scripture as ever with it being Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 and then we'll be exploring Jesus the Evangelist before looking carefully at how those that came after Jesus followed his example, including a brief excerpt from an interview I had with a great evangelist that I have the pleasure of calling a friend of mine. Once we've explored that, we'll look at the conclusions that we've reached about carrying the good news before seeing how that fits into God's body plan as the body is built together and a review of the hints as to how we know his body is being fitted as he wants to. As ever, at the end of the session, we'll have some prayer points for us to consider. Previously on Word Search in our series about God's fit body plan, we've looked at the overview of what we're considering, which is that every believer, every follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, is called to be a member of the body of Christ. And as such, Every believer belongs to others in Christian fellowship and God has a plan for how his body should function and it's for us to know how his body is supposed to function well. We looked at that in the wider context of the book of Ephesians and then in the narrower focus of Ephesians chapter 4 before considering carefully what was going on in our key area of verses 11 to 16 in terms of what Paul is saying about what Jesus has done and what Jesus looks for in his body. Last week, we explored carefully the gifts of the apostle and the prophet, what they are and what they do, and we explored and the conclusions that we reached about that in terms of how vital both the apostolic and the prophetic still is if the church is to be fit as God is looking for it to fit. I encourage you to listen to that episode, which you can do, by clicking the link above. Our series is guided by some key questions as to how God's body fits as he wants. Those questions include, what are those gifts sent to help the body? What is the work of the ministry? What members are there of the body? And how is the body fit to function? As well as why does all of that matter? We explore that considering as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit as well as how we all fit together to function as God wants us to. At this juncture, we'll have the reading of our core scripture for today, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16, according to the New Living Translation, as read by my friend, Shirley Evans. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. 
as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Thank you so much for the reading of the scripture, Shirley. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you for your word. As we explore your word, we look for your wisdom to gain and grasp as much as we can of the truth that you want us to see for ourselves so that we can truly grow together to reach the fullness of the maturity of who Jesus is. Help us at this time as we focus on the evangelist. Help us to see the value of the evangelist and the good news that you shared yourself through your son so that we can likewise be equipped empowered and enthused to share that good news with others help us now as we look to you and say thanks in jesus name as mentioned we're focusing on the evangelist and as we focus on the evangelist a good insight that we're looking to on all of these is to consider first how jesus embodied that which he expects his body to do so in luke chapter 4 it says he came to nazareth he being jesus where he had been brought up and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He goes on to say other things before the scripture goes on to say, And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So that's according to Luke chapter 4 verses 16 to 18. And when we consider that scripture carefully, we can already see there that the proclaiming of the good news is a great definition of what an evangelist is. The term evangelist is not a exclusively Christian term because it is usually referring to a messenger with good tidings and comes from the thought of the battlefield in the day where people were looking to hear who won the battle. It's also interesting to remember that in the same way that last week we considered the apostle and the prophet, these two were sent by God. The apostle was sent with the responsibility to set up establish what that kingdom proclamation would look like so part of their calling would include uh, the sharing of the good news being an evangelist as it were and then likewise as the prophet was sent with a message from god so too is the evangelist sent with a message by god key difference being the prophet would have a message from god on a wider range of issues helping to both correct and steer the church in the right way, and not just a prophetic responsibility to the church, but reminding the church of its prophetic responsibility to the world as well. Whereas the evangelist specifically has the desire to see people hear the good news, accept the good news, embrace the good news, and then respond appropriately. So we can see here that Jesus is an evangelist. Evangelists in this day and age tend to focus on the good news being Jesus. So a good question to ask is, what is the good news that Jesus is referring to if he is the center of the good news? And the center of the good news is him, but it's also about the rule of God. It's about the kingdom of God being established. It is to say that in the same way that there was good news to say that such and such an army had won the battle, it's the good news to the poor to say that the rule of God has overcome uh, the wicked one, overcome darkness to establish a rule that the poor can embrace. They can embrace it because it will truly enrich them. And not just the physically poor, the materially poor, but the poor in spirit, those who recognize that they are no one and nothing without God, wandering about in darkness, stumbling from one thing to another, the good news as Jesus would go on to express it and demonstrate it, was that now the rule of God is here to banish all of those things, to bring about the acceptable year of the Lord as Isaiah would go on to proclaim it. How Jesus was an evangelist is very interesting. He had a public ministry for sure, and that would at times see him 
proclaiming the good news to crowds. But we also see how Jesus was just as much concerned to share the good news on a one-to-one basis. We see that specifically in John chapter 4 where Jesus has an encounter with a woman at the well and his encounter with her transforms her life and indeed triggers in her the capacity for her too to become an evangelist or because he had shared with her the good news in a one-to-one setting. So evangelism, when we consider what it is to proclaim the good news, it's not necessarily about having a 40-minute blah, 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 blah at somebody uh, so that they'll have to listen to you going through a whole range of things. It's just the declaration of the good news of how God rules and Jesus himself was able to express that in conversation mode as well as in declaration proclamation mode. So that's the way that the good news could be expressed by Jesus as the first evangelist. What's also fascinating to discover about Jesus the evangelist is that his words were often backed up with actions. So his words about the kingdom of God being established, about the poor being enriched, about those who are blind having the recovery of sight, about those who were imprisoned and those who were in captivity being liberated and set free. These were not just words, these were words that were backed up with actions often. That's interesting in terms of what the evangelist's call was about, as we'll see later on. Jesus embodies and expresses the role of the evangelist in a way that sets the example that his disciples could look at and follow. So it's key to remember that the disciples, those that followed him, observed what he did, heard what he said, and had a good idea of what they were to do as well when they were going about sharing the good news of the kingdom of God being present. In the light of that, how did Jesus' followers follow his example? In scripture, there's this fascinating section in Acts chapter 21 where we're told, on the next day we departed and came to Caesarea and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. It's a fascinating verse because this is the only verse in scripture that refers to someone specifically being referred to as an evangelist. Although to be clear, it's not the only time that somebody evangelizes or indeed that the work of evangelism is taking place. But it's fascinating to see this being referred to particularly to Philip. In the New Testament as a whole, there are so many episodes of people expressing the good news. Whether it's Peter expressing the good news on the day of Pentecost, whether it's Paul as they go about on their missionary journeys expressing the good news in different settings, even with Stephen uh, being able to proclaim boldly what the good news is all about, even though that would lead to his death. There are so many examples, not just in the book of Acts, but different letters where the gospel is expressed. The book of Romans itself has been described by many as the gospel being fully explained and expounded upon, although not comprehensively, because there are there's so much more to the gospel than is seen in the book of Romans set to a specific audience. But it is to say, if you want to see the evangelistic in action, you just read the New Testament and see so many different areas in which men and women are proclaiming what the good news is. And the apostles were the first ones to do it once Jesus left. They were the first ones to get in on the act of taking their evangelism seriously. After all, it was the basis of their mission. So having learnt from Jesus, once Jesus ascended and they received the Holy Spirit, they were empowered to share the good news, as we said, as seen by Peter on the day of Pentecost and elsewhere it would be the basis of the mission that they were on and it's fascinating looking at the book of Acts in chapter 8 that when in the light of Stephen's stoning the church were persecuted as the church was spread around the area wherever they went the people shared the gospel of Jesus Christ not just an individual person people as a whole made it their habit to spread the good news wherever they went. So we come to Philip, who, as described in Acts chapter 21, verse 8, and indeed referring to earlier on in Acts, Philip was not the disciple, but this Philip was somebody different, who was one of the seven that were chosen to serve Hellenistic widows after there was a dispute over unfair distribution of goods to those who needed it. 
And so Philip was one of those that was appointed as a man full of the spirit of God to be able to serve those needs. And indeed, as he's serving those needs, he's still exercising his gift as an evangelist. That's recognized clearly by the saints. And it's fascinating to see two episodes of Philip in action that gives us an idea of how the evangelistic operated. So the first episode is seen in Acts chapter 8 verses 4 to 13 that says as follows. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralysed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practised magic in the city, and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. It's so intriguing seeing the public ministry that Philip has on display in Samaria, where he's both proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, as well as the good news of the name of Jesus. He's declaring it, but then he's also demonstrating it with what the good news of the rule of God looks like with those unclean spirits leaving those who were captive to them and those who were paralyzed being healed and restored to fullness of health. So there's the proclamation as well as the practice of the rule of God as Philip the Evangelist does his work for the glory of God and focuses us all on Jesus. And the impact that it has in terms of the city being full of joy is again another great expression of what good news does to people it leaves people with joy because the rule of god defeating the devil defeating death defeating disease that's got to be good news and not just that but faith in jesus giving us the life of christ and giving us the gift of his holy spirit as well that's good news so we see that in terms of a public ministry but then consider what goes on in Acts chapter 8 verses 26 to verse 40. And that says as follows. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation, for his life is taken away from the earth? And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else then philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture he told him the good news about jesus and as they were going along the road they came to some water and the eunuch said see here is water what prevents me from being baptized and he commanded the chariot to stop 
And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and a eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. So intriguing to see how Luke chronicles the developments and the expansion of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the public ministry in Samaria. And there's this personal ministry uh, with this Ethiopian eunuch, this treasurer, man of great responsibility in Ethiopia. And how this personal ministry results in one of the greatest signs and wonders that evangelists look out for. People being saved. People receiving the gospel, heartily embracing it and desiring to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and express that through that act of baptism. So those give us good indications as to the heart of the evangelist, what the evangelist is there to do and what they look for and what they thrive on. And Philip gives us a good idea of the evangelist in action, both in the public and in the personal. But it's not just for the evangelist to be there to do that in public and in private and for them to be practicing it. It's also there for us to express the good news of Jesus and the kingdom. They are there to stimulate us and to get us thinking carefully about what it looks like for us to be faithful in sharing the good news. And that got me thinking about a conversation that I had the privilege of having uh, with a good friend of mine called Kelvin Wansa. And we were conversing among other things. And here's a snippet of the interview that I had with him where I asked him, how does an evangelist help to build the body of Christ? Here's a bit of what he had to say. I said two ways. So one way is me, you know, uh, going out and fulfilling my calling, like winning souls and praying that every soul that's born, they join the local church. The other way is for me as well, where I am right now, to, to pray to the Lord, to open my eyes, just like somebody identified my calling within the church, I'm also be able, with the Lord's help, to identify somebody, basically replicate myself, to, to have another Kelvin. <laughs> So that's another way, you see what I mean? Uh, and that's so important, and that can happen just by me being faithful. Being faithful to what God has called me, you know what I mean? Every time I'm given an opportunity to minister to, to his people, somebody could, somewhere could be watching, Zoe could be watching this and say, you know what, I want to be like Uncle Kelvin. And we might think that the child is just saying, I want to be like Uncle Kelvin, thinking it's harder saying, but it's that gift that God has given, it just, it's been stared up just by listening to what I'm, what I'm saying or by looking at what I am doing. And that's why it's so, so important and vital and for us to remember as an evangelist to, to just to be accountable and be responsible to, and be faithful to what God has called us because once we destroy our witness, our witness by our conduct, then that's it the body of Christ suffers. Sound words of wisdom there from Kelvin. And if you want to hear more about the interview that I had with him and how they explored different areas, both in exploring the scripture in Acts chapter 8, as well as his own journey towards discovering his call to be an evangelist and the state of evangelism in the church today and in the world today. If you want to find out more about that, Stay tuned to this channel. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more of that particular interview with this great man of God to discover also more of how evangelism should affect us and help us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus. So grateful to God for Kelvin Mwansa. Considering all of those aspects then, what conclusions can we reach? Well, there's something that Paul would go on to repeat in Romans chapter 10, and he's making reference to Isaiah, 
it's just beautiful to read what Isaiah himself actually said in chapter 52, where he says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. It's so crucial for us to realize Jesus himself proclaimed the good news of the kingdom, the good news that God rules, the good news that there is peace, the good news of happiness, the good news of salvation. Jesus himself proclaimed all of this when he was here and he expected those that followed him to likewise proclaim that good news, the good news of the rule of God as seen in Jesus and seen in Jesus in what he does in his death, what he does in the burial and what he does in the resurrection so that we can have a right relationship with God and enjoy this good news under the rule of God likewise. So he wants us to express the good news and to help us to do that he has gifted specific people who exhibit what it is to share the good news. They are there as an example. They are there with their hearts turned on to looking for the lost, seeking the lost at any cost, to share with them the good news in the desire and the hope that souls will be saved for the kingdom of God. They are there as an example. They are likewise there to help us recognize the fact that we're all built on a mission with a message. So the mission is about the kingdom of God. And the message is about sharing the good news of that kingdom with others so that they can turn away from the kingdom of darkness towards this marvellous kingdom of light. The good news in terms of the role of the evangelist is that they can do that in different formats, on different platforms. It doesn't have to be the uh, loudspeaker on, on a street corner. It can just as much be about those interpersonal relationships that develop over time or that one-off conversation that you can have with somebody on a journey from somewhere. All of that are different ways in which the good news can be communicated, but it's just to have that heart and that burden to see people listen and hear the good news. And the thing about the evangelist as well is that they're not just outward looking, they are as much inward looking in terms of stirring up the body of Christ. As Kelvin put it, they are just as much there to identify others who might have that passion likewise to see others come to know Jesus. The evangelist is there to get the church to be stirred up with that desire to go out and share the good news with others. So crucial in this day and age that we're aware of that calling that God has given us. And the challenge for us as believers as ever, if we recognize that we are members of the body of Christ who are called to be ministers of the Lord and messengers of the good news on the mission of the kingdom of God is can we see it in Jesus? And if we see that in Jesus and recognize that in Jesus, then we can see how we are called to follow in his footsteps for his glory. I want us to consider how the evangelist fits into what God's fit body plan is is so i want us to consider carefully how his body is built so his body is built on jesus as the example so we see that jesus is the foundation he is the chief cornerstone everything is built on him and the first thing that we're told is built on him is the apostle and how the apostle is built on him is in that sense that the apostle is sent has that desire to set up an expression of the gospel of Jesus Christ, both to the outside and how that develops the body of Christ that the apostle is keen to build on the inside. So there's that outreach element and then there's the inbuilding element that the apostle is really keen to see. But the foundation is as much as we read built on the prophets who has that calling of God to hear from God and then communicate the will of God to the people of God and also remind the people of God of their prophetic responsibility beyond the walls of the church to the outside world, what they have to say about what the rule of God is all about. So based on that, there's that building that we have being constructed and how there's still that element of the what we do within that builds us up to do what we're called to do beyond ourselves which is where the evangelist comes in to remind us that we are sent with a message 
were on a mission sent with a message. And the body of Christ then, it's essential that it's built on the premise of that understanding that we are sent on a mission with a message, a heart that wants to see people hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Those are three of the five gifts that that we're told Jesus has given to the church to build the body of Christ until we mature into the fullness. And in the coming weeks, we'll discover more about what both the shepherd and the teacher has to do to contribute to the building of the body of Christ. And it's all with the one goal. That one goal is that we should grow up to be just like the head. So from the foundation of Jesus and everything being built on him, everything is designed to grow up to become like Jesus. So in the light of that, let's consider our key review of God's fit body plan. This week we should have seen that the gift that has been sent to help to build the body and remind the body of its purpose and function is the role of the evangelist. That should say then that the work of the ministry is for us to have an evangelistic mindset that says that we're seeking to share the good news of Jesus with those around us. And the members of the body of Christ then are those who help us to fulfill that particular element. So the body is truly fit to function when we take on board the serious responsibility to have that desire to see souls one for the kingdom of God. It matters because it was the heart of Jesus. When he saw those who were helpless and harassed, his concern was that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few, and he encouraged his disciples to pray for the laborers. And just when they thought it was safe, he informed them that they are the very laborers that he's sending out to make the most of the harvest. It's the same thing for us as those who are called to follow him. We likewise are called to be a part of, of those who are called into the harvest and make the most of it by reaping them. Because as ever, it's good to know as a part of the body where you fit and how we fit together to function as God wants us to function. In the light of that, here are some key prayer points I want us to consider going forward. Let's praise God for the good news. Let's praise God for the good news to the poor, that there can be recovery of sight to the blind, that those who are oppressed and imprisoned can be liberated and set free because the rule of God is here. Let's praise God for the good news. And then thank God that Jesus himself came bringing that good news, embodying that good news, dying and rising again so that we could be participants of this good news. Let's ask God for the humility to recognize and learn from the gifted evangelists that Jesus has sent to the body of Christ. It's not for us to say, it's not for us to do anything. It's not for us to make excuses. It's for us to humbly submit ourselves to what evangelists can teach us by example and by direction as to what we can do to share the good news with others. And then in the light of that, let's seek God for opportunities to share the good news. Whatever that looks like, let's seek God for those opportunities. Where can I share the good news today? And then let's celebrate God for his eternal purposes being fulfilled in Christ, who is the embodiment of the good news. Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, we go on to episode 15, God's Bodybuilders tending to his sheep so discover more about what that's all about in our next episode of word search in the meantime please remember to like this video and share it with others share it with those you're particularly concerned about who need to hear this word that can encourage them in appreciating the role of the evangelist while you're liking and you're sharing remember to subscribe to the channel it really means a lot to us that you do so, so that you can find out, as you remember to turn that notification bell on, uh, more episodes of Word Search as they crop up. Also remember to subscribe to be informed and alerted to that interview that I was referring you to uh, with my good friend, the evangelist himself, Kelvin Wanser. Look out for that on the channel in the coming days and weeks.
If you want to support the channel, we would love to receive that support in any way, shape or form that you want to do so. And if you want to support us, please get in touch with us in the contact information in the details below. The key to word search is not just about listening, it's about putting it into action. So we hope you can do that by hearing what's been said about the importance of the good news and then putting it into action by sharing it. But in the meantime, thank you so much for listening to word search. If you want to share your own experiences or your own insights in terms of the evangelists, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, likewise, feel free to share those or leave your comments in the box below or at the side or wherever the comments are located thanks so much for your time in listening to word search on this occasion god richly bless you because here on word search we're keen to find treasure in god's word so that we can be hearers and doers of his word for his glory until next time on word search god richly bless you and all those that you care for as you share the good news of jesus christ so that others can come and join the kingdom. Shalom.